problem in our world's oceans today. Coral bleaching is really affecting many things around us. Let's get deeper about the problem, how it's caused, and who or what is affected by this. Coral bleaching needs to stop. Currently, it is a big problem in today's world oceans. This problem is affecting many sea creatures. Sea creatures are losing their homes. Also, many lose a place to hide and get eaten by larger creatures in the ocean. The colorful fish are also in danger from no place on where they could camouflage. There are also many reasons why coral bleaching is happening. Let's get into the information on a documentary of coral bleaching. because uh, it, it harms corals, it, it destroys habitat for um, all the organisms that are living in and around coral reefs. Uh, it's, it's very destructive. Coral bleaching is becoming a bigger and bigger issue. Coral bleaching was first massively discovered in 1982 and is continued on from 1983. It was first seen at the Pacific coast of Panama. As was stated by an article by National Ocean Surface, in 2005 the U.S. lost half of its coral reefs in the Caribbean in one year due to a massive bleaching event. According to their statements, they also stated comparisons of satellite data from the previous 20 years confirmed that thermal stress from the 2005 event was greater than the previous 20 years combined. The data collected over the years showed scientists that coral bleaching was a serious problem that wasn't going to be solved on its own. By 2016, scientists stepped in. This image shows a healthy coral, a stressed coral, and a bleached coral. Take a look. Scientists and marine biologists are trying to fix the problem or buy time. As was stated by NPR.org, currently scientists are trying to read the corals. As was talked about, in a study published this month, Cleve and others found the adaptation strategies to buy corals more time only if emissions are lower, but under high emissions, corals still largely disappear. Have you ever seen coral reefs in real life? I have. I've been, been lucky to uh, snorkel, never scuba dive, truly, um, and, and they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Lots of colors, lots of biodiversity, different fish, different um, organisms swimming around and so for me I, I really enjoy all the different wildlife that I see there so I've been really lucky. I've, I've seen coral reefs in Hawaii, in Mexico, off the coast of Florida, uh, in the Cayman Islands and, and I really enjoyed them. Okay. Thank you. That's really interesting to have an experience before they are like fully bleaching out as in a situation. Right, right, right. It makes me care about them a little bit more. To continue on, as Cleopas also points out, time is short, she says, for coral reefs to survive. Emissions would have to fall below zero before 2100. And restoration and adaptation tools would have to be rolled out in a widespread way in the next 20 to 30 years.
Coral reefs were really different before the age. Coral reefs are home to many sea creatures like oysters, clams, crabs, sea stars, sea urchins, various sponges, and many different types of fish. All of these organisms use corals as a way to camouflage, home, shelter, and some use corals to get food. Corals were really vibrant, so it was hard for larger species to hunt for food, like fish, such as clownfish, because they would camouflage it with the colorful corals. Now, since coral reefs are bleaching, sea creatures have less or no place at all on where they live, and even hide, not including food that they get from corals. This is really affecting organisms because then larger sea creatures will eat a lot of them. Since they are defenseless, this could then lead to animals extinction and ruining the food chain. Flash what? Serious is coral bleaching and why is it so serious? Well, it's it's pretty serious. Um, so coral bleaching is not you know, just a coral turning white. So coral is an animal that has algae living inside of it. And when coral bleaches, what's what's happening is it's kind of kicking out the algae. It's it's doing that because um, the oceans are warming, and the coral is realizing it, it can't have that algae living in it. So it's it's expelling the algae due to those increasing temperatures. It it needs that algae as its food source. And so when it has the ocean warming, you know, a couple of degrees Fahrenheit, you might think, well, that's not a big deal, but it is a big deal to the, to the coral. And so it, it releases that algae in, in response to that warming temperature. It's a, it's a really big deal because most likely it's not going to survive that event. It's, it's dying off and it's its last stitch effort. So it bleaches and then it, it dies afterwards. If those coral reefs die, if they, if they bleach and die, they are home to many organisms. They, they won't sustain those homes. And they will, they will die off, the coral reefs will die off. In the last 10 years, we've lost more than 50% of our coral reefs. In some areas, complete coral reefs have died, like the Great Barrier Reef, huge amounts of coral reef have, have died. Is it also affecting like, the food web due to the Absolutely, food? absolutely. So the habitat dies off, which then impacts the whole food web from the smallest organisms to the biggest organisms. It impacts the whole food web. Coral bleaching is occurring for many reasons. However, one of the biggest reasons is global warming. Global warming is also known as climate change. Climate change or global warming is when the planet temperature is rising in this case. Global warming is caused by humans activities such as burning fossil fuels, which includes daily activities like driving. Coral bleaching is mostly caused by global warming. The change in temperature is stressing the corals out and they are losing their color. Due to this, corals get stressed out and later they could die. How can we protect corals from bleaching, and do you think humans are impacting this? Yeah, well, well, to protect them, we have to think about how we are impacting them. That's a great kind of combination. Um, you know, the things that we do every day definitely Im impact what's happening. So there's, there's little things that we're doing, like when we have fertilizer runoff, pollution runoff, that does impact the coral bleaching. But the biggest thing that we're doing has to do with climate change, so we have to reduce our emissions. We have to you know, reduce all of the use of fossil fuels, so less carbon dioxide going into the air, less methane, less fossil fuel usage going into the air. And when that happens, that temperature rising will drop. And that's the biggest thing that we can do to protect corals from bleaching. And there's definitely steps we can do. Some people say it's too late, but it's, it's never too late to change and stop that, that global warming from happening, and, and we all can do something, but really we have to get our, our government involved and, and get some laws that make some, some big change. So that's the thing that we need to be doing, get active.
Yeah, I totally agree in that I think it's never too late to fix it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. It's never too late to do something right. Now that you have some inside information, let's dive deeper. The first topic I want to go more in depth about is talking about how badly it could affect us and animals. us are badly affected by coral reefs bleaching. As I talked before, coral reefs are used as a habitat, shelter, and to men, no more reefs. That means that there is nowhere for species to live. This could cause species to die. Not only it is affecting sea creatures, but it also could impact other living organisms and plants. According to article Losing Our Coral Reefs, bleaching reefs called vulnerable to disease, stunts their growth, affects their reproduction, and could impact other species that depend on the corals community. Several bleaching kills them. Now that you have learned, it could also affect species, but it could also affect humans. For an example, if fish and sea creatures start dying out, the bigger fish will have no food, and then we also eat fish. So we won't have some of the food. This is really destroying the food web. I want to point out that coral reefs are highly in danger. On the map that you can see, red is high, yellow is medium, dark blue is low, and green is no bleaching. On the map to the right, you can see that most of the map is filled with red, which represents that coral bleaching is high in that area. This map really shows how big the problem is. And if you look at all the highlight green dots, there are only really a few areas that are free from bleaching. Here's another data sheet from May 3rd, 2022 by NOAA Coral Reef Swatch. Scientists and marine biologists did not know what was happening with corals, so investigation after investigation proved that corals are bleaching from heat stress that is caused by global warming. Here, coral bleaching is caused and is still causing many problems in our ecosystem and impacting them a lot. It's impacting lots of animals, the environment, and so much more. As was stated by Carl in the coral reef, in a fraction of the time with a fragment of the coral, the world's coral reefs are in trouble. Over the next 30 years, they are expected to decline by as much as 90% due to harm caused through the warming of the ocean. It is possible to regrow coral and even restore a reef to help, but that can take 25 years. I want to give a special thank you to Ms. Merges. Thank you so much for helping me on the interview in my documentary for Coral Bleaching.